Okay, so this is a video about the black box, and specifically it's about a particular workflow or a particular way of using the black box that's very much inspired by the multi-track tape recorders of yesteryear. So um, the Tascam Porta Studio I think is the most well-known of these, and so I call this the Porta Studio workflow. And the idea is that I'm treating this like a digital version of one of those multi-track tape recorders and I am loading uh, different sounds onto different tracks and then I'm using uh, my MIDI controller faders here to bring those sounds in and out. Um, there's a lot of great artists who've uh, worked with this type of thing. Uh, the few names I'll drop is Alessandro Cortini. I'm very impressed with his work and the way that he uses uh, the Porta Studio as, a, as an instrument. Um, also Amulets does a lot of really great stuff with tape loops and uh, multi-track recorders, um, so definitely check out both of their works if you're into this style of, of ambient. So what I'm going to do here um, is specifically focus on kind of this workflow as relates to having an external MIDI controller. So I'm using the Korg Nano Control 2 here, uh, but any MIDI controller with a bunch of faders like this will work. I'm also going to use these knobs up here. Um, optional but nice to have. I'm probably not going to use any of the rest of the buttons. Just the faders and knobs is kind of all I need for this type of thing. And um, in terms of what sounds to actually play, now of course you can load up whatever samples you want on here, um, but I thought it would be fun to actually make some sounds on the fly and kind of build out a composition. And so in a bit of a challenge mode for myself, I decided to use the Korg Volca Kick, um, which I actually just got like less than a week ago, so I'm pretty brand new with it. And I'm going to use it um, to make some kind of more melodic tones. So this will be my like tone generator. So I've just got the output of that going to the input of the black box so I can sample. Um, this is a brand new preset on the black box. So nothing is set up or pre-mapped out. Um, so I want to show kind of start to finish how this works. So first thing I'm going to do is um, set my record input here so that I can have my recorded sounds come in. Um, I prefer to use the threshold mode here. Um, now in this case my sounds are going to be mostly short attack. I could do long attack like this. In fact, maybe they will be more long attack. But you can see as it's fading up from zero, whatever you set your threshold to, that's where it's going to start recording. And if I want to make sure to not lose the, the nice gentle uh, attack on my sound here. I want to make sure to set this threshold just a bit above the noise floor. So I'm going to go with, you see my noise floor is about negative uh, 55, I'll go with negative 50. That way I'm not accidentally cutting off the very beginning of that attack. Um, if instead you're doing a more like a, a one-shot percussive sound, you can set the threshold higher. Um, you can all, always tweak it later too, it's up to you. So let's try this, um, and the rest of these settings should be fine. Okay, so to start with, uh, let's just record a single tone into the black box here. So go up back in here, hit record, and start with the lowest one. Stop, all right. So there's my first one. Okay, good. And let's get another one here. Keep going. I'm just going to play all the white keys here. Okay, so now I've got all of those, and so I can just play them here. So you can hear how they all ring out on top of each other, and that's what we want. Um, so basically, we now have you know eight simple tones here, and between them, we can make you know intervals and chords, just like that. Um, so we're going to do that um, now. The next thing I want to do is I want to trigger all of these to basically happen all of the time, um, so that I don't have to manually trigger them, um, and then I also 
but before I do that, if, if I just do that all right now, it's going to sound terrible. So before I do that, let's map out uh, these controls here. Okay, so with my sound, um, what I want is to map this fader to be the overall volume or the level. So I'm going to go in here to my level menu, and I'm going to set my CC for this, hit learn, move that, it learns it, and then set the amount to, to be 100. Um, now what you'll notice is initially when you're playing the sound, you can't fully mute it. You can't bring the level all the way down. And it kind of takes a minute to wrap your head around it. But what this is saying is with this CC control, um, what is the amount of, of uh, level increase I can add to this? Or if I put this as a negative number, it would be what's the amount of level decrease. So for example, I could have my fader be backwards if I wanted for some reason, but I don't, I want it here. So once you have this set to 100, hit it back, and then on this level knob right here, this is where you're gonna to need to play with it until you have what you want. Basically, turn your fader to the max volume, and then set this to be whatever you want the actual max volume to be. So you notice it's not really going down in volume because this is kind of overriding it. So I'm gonna go about negative 60, and now if I go down to zero, I don't hear anything. And I can raise this up until I hit the point where I do start to hear it. Right about there, negative 30 or so. There we go. So now I really have the full range from, you know, kind of zero uh, to full, full volume. And so that's a little fiddly and it's like you have to kind of play with both. So that's what I do is I set this one to 100% and then I go in here and I play with this level until I get the min and the max that I want. Now while I'm in here I also have this knob and I want to set this knob uh, to be my filter. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that now. Go in here, pick one of my filter mods, hit learn, turn the knob, there it is. And this one I don't think we have to do much with, let's see. Um, yeah, this one just kind of works out of the box because this is already a two-pole filter that starts at that zero high noon position, and so it does the same thing now that this button does. Let's get that back to zero. Okay, so I've now got my volume and my filter. And I also want to note that um, I can actually have each of these things map to more than one thing. So like, for example, say I wanted this knob to control both the filter cutoff and the resonance simultaneously, you can do that. I would just go into the resonance and set my, set my mod source here to be the same MIDI CC coming from this knob. And so you can really have all of these be macro knobs. They don't have to be just one thing. For this, I'm gonna keep it simple and have it be just the filter cutoff and nothing else. Okay, so now let's go through and repeat that process for all the rest of these sounds that we made. So filter, and boom, back. Let's try the same negative 30 or so. So I've now done that same process uh, for eight, all of these eight pads. So all of them I now have mapped out to these faders and I have the knobs mapped out to the filter cutoff for each one of those. Now, um, I want to have them play, uh, I want these sounds to play indefinitely, uh, kind of like as if they were a tape loop that was just playing over and over. And then I can bring them in and out with these faders. So there's a couple different ways to do that. One, I could use the sequencer and just trigger the note to play 
um, but I'm going to instead use the loop mode for that um, because the what's cool about the loop mode is that you can start loops at different times. They don't all have to be in lockstep. So I'll show you that. Um, so we're going to come in here. We're going to go to the position uh, menu. Loop mode is going to be um, just a forward loop. No fade, no reverse, and it's just going to be the whole thing. Let's go. So if we go back here, we'll see um, it's not looping. <laughs> and that is because I want this to be on toggle mode. So toggle mode means that once I hit it, it'll stay on until I turn it off, which is what I want here. So you can see it's going to go through, it's going to loop just forever. And if I wanted that loop to be shorter, I could do that here. I think I do want the long, the long tail on it. And I can always change that later. Okay, so this one is now looping indefinitely. And notice my sequencer is not running. So this, this loop is not clocked whatsoever. It's just whenever I hit uh, start and stop like that. So I'm going to do that same thing for each one of these as well. Um, they're all going to be in the same mode of toggle, position, loop, forward. By the way, I always forget to use it. But there is a handy little thing here where you can switch between your pads without leaving the menu you're in. So you should use that in this case. Let's turn you off. Loop mode forward, toggle. So now all of these should be kind of in the same boat here, where I can I can trigger them uh, kind of out of sync anytime I want just by tapping it. Okay, and it's just based on the length of that sample file. Since I didn't quantize that recording time at all hear one of them is longer than the other, which means they have these, these phasing things, right? See, now they're playing almost together to make a chord, and now they're going to get out of phase again, and that's going to keep cycling around, and I think that's pretty cool, right? So that's a reason why I'm not using the sequencer here. Um, I want them to be able to uh, go in and out of phase with each other. This is one, two, three. It's this guy here. And I can also bring in some silently by having it all the way down. In fact, I'm going to bring all of them in. composition missing, but of course some reverb. Let's head on over to effects. Effects 2 here is your reverb. And I'm just going to turn it up for all of them. And now get into my reverb and change the settings a bit. And notice 
notice some of these are MIDI mappable as well. So if I had extra knobs or whatever, I could be mapping these too. Instead of this being just my filter, I'm going to have it be my pitch as well. So now, I should be able to tweak it more. So similar to kind of how you work with the Porta Studio in that you have a speed control and then you can change the pitch of something based on the speed of the tape playback. to emulate a bit of that tape feel is we need some of that actual tape hiss um, that kind of background noise and grit and static that comes from actual analog tape now um, I could record that in but I actually already have some samples in here that I think will do just fine for now um, that have some of that kind of tapey vibe to them um, let's go into Heinbach's isolation loops and some of these had some of that well there is actually tape here, but I think it was these bandpass ones. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so this is a big long sample. Um, I'm going to, I think, trim it way down because I don't know all the stuff that it does. I just want this first part right here. go in and make that one loop as well so that's going to be a forward loop and again that same toggle mode and let's go back to that okay, so it should just loop between the little white flags there now
that's going. Let's bring in all this other stuff again. So start with everything silent. Just kind of randomly starting these all out of phase. And let's bring some stuff in. Notice I also did arrange them so that I have my lowest tone to my highest tone, so I can kind of get a sense of what it's going to be, even though I don't know what actual note value this is.
So yeah, there you have it. Um, I find that a really fun and relaxing way to make music. Um, I just want to add uh, that you can also, since the, the black box can accept more than one MIDI controller at a time, so right now I'm just using a single one, but I could also add you know, a piano keyboard or drum pads or whatever else. Like I can have more than, more than just this interface if I want. Um, but in this case, I, I kind of like the limitations of just this. And like, you can see the I'm not really writing melodies at all. I'm just um, bringing individual notes in and out. And any one of those notes, if I decide I don't like it, I can either just re-record it, uh, you know, as a different tone, or I can use the pitch and just change it to be something else. And the time stretch algorithm in this is so good that that pitch, um, it's, it's about three octaves or so that you can go um, you can take any sample, octave it, uh, you know, up and down across about three octaves, and it's still going to sound really good. So you really, I could have done this entire thing with just a single sample and just repitched it on every pad if I wanted to. So um, there's a lot of flexibility there. I also want to point out that because the MIDI learn on this is so flexible, it doesn't have to be just a one-to-one -one mapping. Like I showed, I could make kind of a macro control where, like, say, one knob is controlling both the filter and the pitch at the same time. I could do the same thing with these faders. And so one thing you can do is like, I can actually build chords, like a, a, an interval. Say I have these two pads, um, both controlled by the same fader, and I start them together. In fact, I'll just do this, it's gonna be easier to show you. So um, if I go here, so if I go into this one, and I copy it, and I go here and paste. So I now have that same sound on both of these, the volume's down, but. Okay, so that's the sound, and then same sound right here, but 
this one has no MIDI mapping yet. So let's go in and do that. And so it's going to be here. Um, oh, actually, I take that back. It did copy. Since I copied the previous one, it copied all the MIDI mapping too. So that's convenient. So I don't really have to do anything. Um, so now the way this should work is if I start them both simultaneously, which is going to just be my own manual timing here. Oops, I missed one. Here, let's get out of this screen here. That's basically a unison sound. Well, let's say I go into this top one here and I change its pitch a bit. All right, I can make my own kind of fat unison sounds that way, but I want it to be more like a chord, like an interval. So I'm just going to tune it by ear to something that sounds good. So the problem is <laughs> since it changed. phase, but I've got them both controlled by the same, same one here. All right, well, I hope that gives you some ideas about all the different things you could do with a, a really pretty simple setup like this. Um, the black box is extremely versatile and there's a lot of different possible workflows you can build out of it. This is just one that I've found that I, I really enjoy, um, specifically for kind of the ambient music, uh, the like percussionless music <laughs> that we're making right now. Um, it's, uh, it's really pleasant and relaxing and just, uh, just fun to work with. All right, I uh, hope, uh, hope you get out there and make something great.